Hi! Hi, folks. Another video in the series of Tony Talk While Not Driving. This video is in the series of why I love Japan. I'm currently watching a Japanese drama, Nichan, something or another. And in one scene, there's a gentleman walking along a walkway on the side of a dike. In Tokyo and in other parts of Japan, on the side of the rivers, they place these dikes. They build these dikes. So when the heavy rains come, the river does not overflow into the community. The dikes capture the overflow. And at the bottom of the dikes towards the river, they normally place athletic fields. On top of the dikes, usually there's a walkway, a paved walkway. And in this one scene in this uh, TV drama, there's a gentleman walking down the walkway on top of the dike. And he notices on the side of the road, there's an object. And this object happens to be a religious object in which he kneels and offers a little prayer. Now, what's unique about this is that dike is not private property. That's public property. So that religious object is on public property. Huh? Have you not heard of separation of church and state? Oh, wait a minute. That's only in these United States of America where liberals, Democrats, the news media, academia, the alt-left, they fear religion. Whereas in Japan, there's no fear of religion. That religious object on public property causes no concern, causes no one to get upset in Japan. If you did that in the United States, there would be a total meltdown. First of all, if you place that little bitty object on the side of a public road or walkway in the United States, number one, it would have been kicked over. Number two, it would have been graffiti. Number three, it would have been stolen. Number four, a lawsuit would have been filed. Because in this America, we have no respect for religion. Now, the Japanese Constitution, Article 20. Why do you, kids? <laughs> Let's read it together. You ready? Freedom of religion is guaranteed to all. No religious organization shall receive any privilege from the state. Wait a minute. You allow that on the side of the road there. No exercise any political authority. No person shall be compelled to take part in any religious act, celebration, rite, or practice. The state and its organs shall refrain from religious education or any religious activity. There's a lot there's a lot of restrictions in here, isn't there? Now the United States, the First Amendment, specifically clearly states Congress shall make no law exercise, uh, Congress shall make no law establishing religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof. Very clear, very simple. Yet we prohibit the free exercise thereof. Football players are told you cannot pray on the field. You cannot write a, a story or an article or a composition about Jesus in public schools, all right? You cannot place a cross on the side of the road when someone dies in an automobile accident in these here United States of America. And this all started some years ago, Thomas Jefferson, one of the founding fathers and one of the presidents, and I think it was after he was president, he receives a letter from a Baptist group in the, one of the New England states, I think Connecticut. And in the letter, it asked him to clarify the First Amendment, the religious clause. And he wrote back, and in there somewhere, separation of church and state. Well, over the years, in many public schools in the United States in the, in the early part, the Bible was used as a reader. Our founding fathers, the people who wrote the Constitution, attended religious services in government buildings. No problem. In the 1930s, the liberal justice said, read that and said, wait a minute, separation of church and state, no nativity scenes on courthouse lawns, no Ten Commandments in the courthouse lobby, nothing with religion in these here United States of America, because Thomas Jefferson said separation of church and state. You want to know what the problem with that is? What did Thomas Jefferson know? Yes, he was a founding father. Yes, one of the main authors of the Declaration of Independence. 
But when the Constitution was written, where was Thomas Jefferson? He was on the other side of the Atlantic in Viva La Palms as a representative of the United States to the uh, court in Paris. He had nothing to do with the writing of the Constitution. So the bastardization of the First Amendment was due to liberalism in D.J. United States of America. And that's why I love Japan. Because here, let me explain this to you. This week is Thanksgiving week in the United States, celebrating the fact of a, of a bountiful harvest and all the luxuries we enjoy in this country, giving thanks. But its inception, its origin, was the pilgrims coming from Europe seeking religious freedom here in the United States. Well, it wasn't the United States then, but they came to the New World so they could exercise freedom of religion from Europe where it was being oppressed. Well, you want to know something? And these are the United States of America? What is this? <laughs> well, you want, well, you want to know something? In these are the United States of America, if you want freedom of religion, we're going to have to cross the Pacific and go to Japan. Because in Japan, they have freedom of religion greater than we have in the United States of America. That's why I love Japan. No fear of religion. Respect of, your, of the individual. We'll see you. God bless you. Am I allowed to say that? <laughs> God bless America. And God bless the Nihon Koku, the land of the rising sun, our friends and allies in Nippon, Nihon Koku, Japan. See ya! <laughs>